Um, I'm Move. nice to meet everyone. Um, and today I'm gonna to be talking about IPFS Fetch. Specifically, I wanna look at how I've combined some of the usual webby interfaces we're used to with some of these cool peer-to-peer -peer inter interfaces we're used to in IPFS. So there's my intro stuff, that's for it later. Um, I wanted to talk about how the web is good. <laughs> I really love the web. I think it's it really kind of changed me um, as a developer years ago when I started using WebTAC migrating from crazy stuff like Java and C++. And it was just so much easier. I could just slap together a text file, put some HTML on a page, put a little JavaScript and jQuery stuff together just to make something work. And then suddenly everything worked cross-platform. I didn't have to worry about like sending people um, executables, worrying about what uh, platform they're on and making sure everything um, actually displayed properly. It just kind of makes things work. And I really like how it kind of lowers the barrier to entry to creating cool things. However, the web as it is right now is also tied with something that I think is not as cool and that's servers. Um, I think servers are bad. <laughs> On one hand, they enabled us to build up these networks of sharing information. But on the other hand, as an individual, a server is a barrier to entry. It requires more expertise in order to get anything started. For instance, you either need to like have your own machine running locally or have some sort of virtual machine. And then you need to think about like what kind of web servers you're gonna host and all of this stuff, especially um, with, the, with servers and the web everything is kind of hinging around these servers. If I made some sort of cool like blog and I wanna share it with my friends, I have to go through a server. If that server goes offline, suddenly my friends can't access it. Or if say somebody doesn't have internet or can't afford a fancy internet connection or say um, you know Twitter goes down again, suddenly all of that data is gone. Um, it's kind of a pain. And I feel like it's holding people back from the stuff that they can create. So um, one thing that's kind of been popping up lately is third party services that offer hosting for a small fee. So instead of me having to like set up my own server and configure it and make sure everything is online, I can pay money or pay data to some third party and then they'll kind of do everything for me, which is great. Except then the thing isn't really totally mine. If say, it's a Google product, it'll probably, you know, die within a few months or get deprecated later on. Or say if it's any other tech thing, it might just change under my feet or um, run out of business. And suddenly any sort of community I built, anything that I did with that is just gone because um, it's too hard for me to set up. Um, it'd be nice if none of this stuff was a problem. Like I want the web without all of these servers and all of this extra crust. So with that in mind, I think peer-to-peer -peer, um, is kind of the thing that changes everything. Uh, so obviously this is an IPFS meetup, so I think most people are comfortable with peer-to-peer, -peer, but just to reiterate, uh, with the server situation, everyone connects to this one central source. With peer-to-peer, -peer, people connect directly to each other. So if I want to make a blog, uh, I can send a link to a friend and then they can download that blog directly from me. And then if a th third person wants to view my blog, then they can download it directly from me and my friends and anyone else that has a copy. And what's cool is I didn't need to set up a server, hopefully, um, to get this running. I just kind of put some files in a folder and then it just works, which I think is really great and enables a whole bunch of use case use cases, including stuff working over local mesh networks or offline first, say I'm in an airplane and I want to mess with all my data. Centralized server-based apps can do these use cases, but it's a lot harder. Whereas when you build on peer-to-peer -peer first, it's only way easier. So what is peer-to-peer -peer and the web combined good? What would that even look like? For instance, right now, um, let's think about like how people actually interact with the web on a slightly lower level. So the web right now is made on HTTP 
which is a protocol that servers speak. It uses URLs, so links to, to resources. It uses HTTP methods, which is like um, phrases that you're saying to the server. For instance, I wanna get some data. I wanna post some data to the server. I wanna delete this data. Different kind of um, actions that you want the server to do for a given URL. And then normally how we interact with this is we load a web page or we load a video or we load some JavaScript in a web page that does something interesting. Um, developers these days use an interface called Fetch. So if you have some sort of fancy React app, it's a pretty good chance that somewhere underneath that stack, there's a call to this Fetch API in the browser. So with that in mind, I want to propose what a peer-to-peer -peer web might look like. So what if the same way we could get data from um, HTTP, we could get data from IPFS or IPNS. For instance, I take an IPFS link with a hash, I shove it in my browser or I shove it in my application and then it can load the data. Similarly, I want it to resolve mutable data through IPNS automatically. Um, and that's actually something we kind of have already via stuff like IPFS companion and various gateways and integrations into apps. So kind of the new thing I want to introduce here is the idea of posting to IPFS. So right now, if you want to add stuff to IPFS, you need to use one of these APIs. You either need to talk to some sort of um, HTTP server again through an interface or you need to use a pure JavaScript implementation, or you're using a Go library or Rust or whatever else. And they all have these like their own way of speaking to IPFS. With the web, what if we could take that exact same metaphor and shove it into IPFS? And then similarly, what if we could take a similar metaphor and put it into IPNS? For instance, with IPNS, just for those that haven't looked into it yet, it lets you take a IPFS URL. It lets you take a name of some sort of key that you own. And then it lets you publish those together and gives you a special IPNS URL, which is kind of like an IPFS URL that can change over time. So I think these tools are fairly accessible. And uh, in fact, what I've done is I've integrated it into a web browser called Aggregor. So in fact, that's what I'm using to load this presentation right now. Um, I'm not loading the presentation from IPFS, so I'm cheating a little bit, but <laughs> I could. <laughs> um, so my idea is what if we can take all of these different peer-to-peer -peer protocols, for instance, the HyperCore protocol, which I'm using to load my slides, IPFS and IPNS for storing data, um, maybe Ethereum in the mix for interacting with bl blockchains. What, we can, what if we could take all of these different primitives and kind of simplify them for average web developers? Like if I know how to post something to an HTTP server, it should be even easier for me to post something to IPFS or EN, um, ENS or Ethereum in general. I think that Oh, one of the goals for me with this web browser is to one, build JavaScript interfaces for these different fetch APIs so that applications can int integrate them into their app separately, but also to see what it would be like to have a web browser that mixes all of these things at the protocol level. So I'm going kind of fast. So hopefully I'll have time for the demo and it doesn't fail spectacularly. <laughs> so, um, here is my web browser. Here we have the Chrome DevTools. Just to prove that there's no tricks, if I could actually type. So let's explore what it means to get data from a web page. For instance, what if um, what if we fetch something from Google? So the fetch API takes a URL and then some options for the request. So here, what we're going to do is use the, the boring old legacy web and do a fetch request to google.com and see if we can get 
oh no, Google doesn't want that. <laughs> oh no, I should have used a different URL here. Um, there, um, let's request my blog because it's less secure. So we've made a request. We see this time it didn't fail, which is great. And what we can do is actually get the contents of my blog's um, homepage. So we've just got an HTML string with a bunch of junk, doesn't matter. So now that's cool. How do we translate that to IPFS? So right now, if I want to use IPFS, I need to import a bunch of libraries, even though they're really great and it's been a joy to work with them. But it's like a new thing to learn as a web developer. What if instead of importing JSIPFS or some native library, I can just fetch directly from IPNS? Say I want to get the IPN, uh, IPFS homepage. So again, I do the re request. It'll take a little bit longer to load because um, my cache isn't hot, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but subsequent requests are a lot faster. So that first delay there, it was uh, fetching data from IPFS onto my browser. And then just now it was serving it from cache. And so it should be available offline. But again, we just like we did with Google Doc, or with my blog, we can look at what the text for the IPFS homepage is, and it's just some HTML. And so what's cool, any URL that uses IPNS or IPFS could just be shoved into this fetch interface the exact same way that you would with, um, with uh, HTTP. And it's the exact same thing that you would use with um, uh, images or videos or whatever else. Instead of having to have a special plugin to load something from, say, a gateway or loading in memory or doing something crazy like what WebTorrent does, where it downloads chunks on the flies and builds up a video stream in JavaScript, whoa, we can just paste a link in this exact same way that we're used to with um, regular uh, web apps. So next, I'm going to showcase the super difficult uh, challenge of getting stuff onto IPFS, which is going to be really hard, many lines of code. All we got to do is, again, we do a fetch request. And this time, we're going to say IPFS. And what, since we want to upload a file to IPFS, we don't actually have a domain name that we're uploading it to. We're just going to say IPFS colon slash slash and then add a new slash and say index.html. And then we're going to say that the HTTP method we're using is post. The default was get, because uh, this time we want to upload some data. And we're going to say that the body is um, some HTML. So I think I had a bug earlier where it wasn't loading after uploading. So we'll see if it works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, so obviously, we need a good doc type. And we need standard modern elements. So and boom, that's it. I just created an IPFS site. Whoa. And if I want to get the URL for my new site, I look at the response from the IPFS protocol. And here I have a regular old IPFS um, URL. So this might be a little bit different from what you're used to in terms of URLs, because it doesn't start with QM. Um, that's because we have to use a different encoding for web pages because uh, they're case insensitive, whereas the default IPFS um, multi hash encoding is case sensitive. Um, so uh, now that we have this URL, what if we want to update our mutable IPNS URL? So similarly, we'll do another fetch request. And this time, we're going to uh, do a publish request on IPNS. So in uh, IPFS fetch, you can just make up whatever you want for your IPFS 
uh, sorry, IPNS name. This will generate a secret key under the hood for that name, and it'll generate an IPNS URL for you. So this is useful as an application developer because you don't have to um, manage keys yourself. You just make up a name and then uh, the protocol handler does it for you. So let's call it my blog. And then we'll say method publish. And the body will be our IPFS URL that we just created. So we're going to do that, wait for a bit, and then we can see our new IPNS URL by looking at the response. Whoa. So <laughs> that's the live demo. I'm not going to push my luck to go further. But you can see that with this interface, the same stuff that web developers are used to using for getting data from HTTP, we can do with IPFS. And uploading and loading data is um, super simple. And it's using the exact same web metaphor that we have for all other files in web apps. So basically, I just wanted to kind of show this to everyone to show that there's easier ways we can think about protocols. And I think that a lot of protocols are actually very similar. And I think that the way they work can be very beneficial to the web. Some of the things I've been seeing a lot in the hypercore community is webs, web apps that kind of modify themselves or create themselves by kind of writing to their own data. And I think it'd be really cool to see more stuff with IPFS that does similar things like say a blog publishing platform, which doesn't send anything to a server, which doesn't touch any extra uh, file system. It's just a web app. Um, so hopefully this was useful. Hopefully this will inspire people to make stuff. Thank you for <laughs> the time. <laughs>